So, what do we mean by system and surroundings in chemistry? When a chemist is measuring energy changes in a chemical reaction, we need to remember that energy cannot simply appear or disappear. So if a chemical reaction releases energy, we need to think about where it goes. And conversely, if a chemical reaction absorbs energy, we need to consider where it has come from. In order to do this, let's consider a really simple view of the universe from the perspective of a chemist. I'm going to consider my universe as a giant box. And what we are interested in, specifically in chemistry, is a chemical reaction. So I'm going to call my chemical reaction, including the reactants and products, the system. So let's draw that in the middle of my universe. And for simplicity, everything else around my chemical reaction, we're going to label the surroundings. Now, knowing that the total amount of energy in my universe can't change, that means that if my chemical reaction, or the system, releases energy, it must be absorbed by the surroundings. And conversely, if my chemical reaction, or the system, absorbs energy, this energy must be lost by the surroundings. Unfortunately, if the surroundings is everything else in the universe, it will be impractical to measure the energy change. So let's take a look at two examples on a more realistic level for a chemist. Let's first imagine a burning piece of wood. So in this case, what is in my system? Well, the system is any reactants and products. So in this case, I would imagine my piece of wood is reacting with oxygen in the air and it might be producing things like carbon dioxide and water. In this example my chemical reaction is clearly releasing energy and where's that energy going? Well it must be transferred to the surroundings. So in this case what might be my surroundings? Well, the surroundings in this case, or the substance that is around my chemical reaction, is going to be air. So any energy released from this chemical reaction must be being transferred to molecules in the air. Let's now look at a second example, this time taking place in a solution. Here is a beaker. Let's fill it with water. And let's add my two reactants, represented by yellow and red particles. And let's also add some of the products produced by these yellow and red particles reacting. Uh, let's make them orange. So in this case, what is going to be defined as my system? Well, just like in the previous example, the system contains my reactants and my products in the chemical reaction. So it would be the yellow, red and orange particles. So what then would we consider as the surroundings in this example? Well, the surroundings is the substance that is directly around my reactants and products. So in this case, Actually, my surroundings would be all of the water molecules represented by the blue area in which the reaction is taking place. So if, for example, this chemical reaction or my system was absorbing energy, well, where has that energy come from? It's come from the surroundings, which in this case means the water and the water molecules that it's composed of. Let's now consider the key points from this video. From a chemist's perspective, the system is defined as the reactants and products in a chemical reaction, and the surroundings is the substance that is around 
my reactants and products. This might sometimes be air and it might sometimes be water. If you found this video helpful, you might check out some of the other cohesive chemistry videos, perhaps even subscribe to the channel.